the Franklin County Board of County Commission is now in session. Pastor Hand, would you lead us in prayer and the pledge, please, sir? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have set before us. Father God, I, I thank you for this city of Apalachicola and for the city of Carabelle and for the communities that all encompass our Franklin County. I thank you for our commissioners today uh, who will be led to make the best decisions concerning this county. And Father, I thank you for the participants today that all voices will be considered and heard and at the end of the day, we will be satisfied because we glorified your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which I stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Good morning. morning. Next on the agenda will be approval of the minutes. So moved. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Masters, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Next on the agenda will be payments of the county bill. So moved. Second. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Paris, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Aye, excuse me. <clears throat> Next on the agenda will be public comments. Commissioner, if I may, before we get to public comments, uh, good morning, everyone. As we're aware, there are uh, numerous public hearings uh, on your agenda today around page 5, starting with item 15. If you're here for one of those public hearings and would like to speak, you will have an opportunity to speak directly to that particular zoning, uh, I'm sorry, that particular public hearing, that land use change, zoning, whatever it is, at that time. I'm not deferring for you to speak. If you'd like, you could still speak on the public comments. I just want you to be aware that you'll also have an opportunity then to speak to that item specifically at that time. And with that, sir. Okay, public comment. Mel Kelly from Carabelle, and before I make my comments, I would like to thank the preacher, the pastor, for including the participants in his prayer today. Thank you, sir. Near the end of last Friday's meeting, Commissioner Massey pointed his finger to the spot where I am standing and loudly announced that Sacred Heart stood right there and said they would close the Carabelle Clinic. I was at the Carabelle Clinic yesterday and they asked me why the clinic would be closed under Sacred Heart when they were so busy. Commissioner Massey, you owe the people of Carabelle, whom you represent, the workers at that clinic, the Friday audience, and the people of the Sacred Heart proposal a heartfelt and sincere apology because you were wrong. If you had been paying attention during the Sacred Heart presentation, or if you had bothered to read the 13 pages, three were pictures, you would have seen on page eight that Sacred Heart plans to keep the Carabelle Clinic open five and a half days a week as it is now and it will be staffed by two nurse practitioners as it is now. You did us a great disservice with your erroneous pontification. I call to your attention page eight on the Sacred Heart proposal. Thank you. Public comment.
Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. We are. Let me get your name for the record. Please. Barry Hand. Okay. And I have with me um, many ministers and pastors within our community. I have been a pastor in, in Apalachicola for 12 years. Before that, I was born and raised and educated here in Apalachicola. Apalachicola and its rich heritage holds the grace and character and promise so many of us within the African American community today. Today, we want to make our concerns known to this most honorable board of what we believe to be a critical need to keep Weems in Apalachicola. Weems Hospital has served over the years as a precise and secure medical safe haven for our community. We would even acknowledge how it has been an advantage to those who are financially challenged and especially to our elderly community. You commissioners are to be honored for keeping your word or your promissory agreement that you made with the cities of Carabel and Apalachicola. You made an agreement with the city of Carabel to construct a health care facility and you carried through with the agreement. You made an agreement with the city of Apalachicola to construct a new public hospital facility to replace Weems Memorial Hospital. And the keeping of your word and agreement with the city of Apalachicola will also be honorable to its citizens. <coughs> the voters of Franklin <coughs> County gave their approval when it was put to a vote. I can assure you that the good citizens of Apalachicola are with you indeed and support. As you know, Weems Hospital is a designated critical <coughs> access hospital. <coughs> and that label is greatly appreciated in our community. I finished by saying, this past seafood festival, I received a late night call that my mother was ill and needed medical attention. As concerned as I was, I must admit I was relieved to know that she would be taken to a critical care hospital called Weems Memorial in her community. We are hearing good and promising reports coming from Weems. I know that you are thankful for receiving any and all good news also. So thank you commissioners for hearing us today for your due diligence in taking our community and city further concerning our public hospital facility. I will yield the floor, the floor to other pastors. We concur. <laughs> Public comments. Good morning, commissioners. Tammy Ray Hutchinson. I'm here today representing H Cola, the Hillside Coalition of Laborers for Appalachia Cola. We want to publicly let you know that we are in full support of Weems remaining here in Appalachia Cola, remaining open, and remaining a full service hospital. We serve primarily the historic North District of Appalachia Cola, affectionately known as the Hill. We think that if the hospital were to close or to move, it would be our population <coughs> that would suffer the greatest loss. Many of our community members have access to the hospital via bicycles, via walking. They have access. Some of them don't have access to transportation. The Hill community, a lot of them live below the poverty level. And so having access to a community, a, a hospital in our community that provides critical care is absolutely necessary. We have witnessed many in our community. Just last year, there was an incident where there was an accident. And we witnessed a brother who panicked and may not have had the presence of mind to call 911, but he remembered that there was a hospital just two blocks away. And we in our community witnessed him 
carry his bleeding his bleeding brother to the hospital down the sidewalk. And so those are things that we at H. Cola want to remember that it is absolutely critical that we keep access here. Those patients who are inpatients would not have the ability to have some of their loved ones visit them because their loved ones may not have transportation. So on behalf of H. Cola, I just want you to know that we are in full support of the hospital remaining here, that there be a new hospital built, that be a full service hospital, and that we keep it here in Apalachicola. And on a personal note, for those people who are vying for the hospital to move, they have not had the opportunity to realize how critical those 20 minutes to Sacred Heart or those 15 minutes somewhere else might be. Back in 2013, my husband went into cardiac arrest. And where, while he went on to be with the Lord, I am fully persuaded that had it not been for the care that he received from the EMTs who transported him to Weems and who stabilized him until he could get to TMH, I believe that he would have gone on to be with the Lord that day. It is absolutely crucial that we keep Weems a viable full service hospital here in Apalachicola. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Public comment. Hi, um, I am Julie Kranz. I am here representing the St. George Island Business Association. Um, we are a group of members that represent not only the businesses on St. George Island, but also businesses in Franklin County that do business on the island. So we have a large group of members, at least 40. Um, we are, uh, I am representing them to talk about the rezoning. I know that's not on the agenda for today, but we did want to put our voice forward um, to give you our perspective, our opinion, and some of the logic behind some of the things that we would like to see in regards to the zoning in the business district on St. George Island. Um, I did provide some documentation. You should have two pages. One is just what I'm going to briefly review. This is a document created by the Business Association, as well as I did provide you with a photo just as a reference. Um, there's a lot of history around the zoning on St. George Island in the business district. Um, it has evolved over the years um, in regards to the growth. I mean, St. George Island was nothing but a sandbar, right? So when you started dividing up the lots, um, it didn't it made sense at the time when they did what they did but over the time as we have evolved and grown as a tourist destination the zoning has become even more critical especially in our business district which is very limited it is from gory to gun from third to third that's the business district that is the only business district that we will ever have on that island um, back in 2017 there was an initiative by the county to try to fix some of the miscalculations that had happened over the years in regards to the business district to try to preserve it. Out of that came a 2018 overlay program um, that a lot of the community supported. There were public meetings. Uh, the vast majority of the community here supported the changes to try to preserve that business district. With any kind of change, there were some obstacles that have come up. Um, you were made aware of the fact that some of the residential properties were having issues with insurance. And from that, you guys have been, my commissioners have been having meetings um, and trying to figure out what is the best solution around that. And there have been a couple of proposals. One is to try to grandfather in, or try to, not grandfather, but try to make um, exceptions for those residential buildings. And then there was another proposal to just remove the overlay at all altogether. Um, that would have a significant impact to us. Um, in our understanding of what that would do for the business district, and that's what we're here to discuss. Um, there are approximately or almost 200 to 300 vacant lots in the business district. Some of those are grouped together. One of the two, the two primary concerns that we would like to bring up is the aesthetics on the island. Um, I don't think that any one of our members disagreed that the east side of the business district with those tall skinny minis is a aesthetic nightmare. It is an obstruction. It is a wall. You have no visibility from inside the business district whatsoever of the beach. This is the photo that I provided for you. They literally look like a wall of houses, something that I don't think that anybody really wants on the island. Our concern is, is that if this is allowed to continue on those over 200 lots in the business district, that you will have multiple walls of obstruction. 
just visualize coming over the bridge and seeing these tall skinny minis side by side they can literally be built within 10 feet of each other and there are multiple groups of lots that could be utilized for this inside the business district we actually took a ride around the business district to see where the groups were and there are significant it would do this to the east the west side of the island it would do it to the middle of the island we don't think that's what anybody really wants the other thing that we are concerned about is the uh, impact financially to the county businesses generate significantly more revenue for the county than a single family home if you look at the existing businesses today they can generate anywhere from 400,000 to over 20 million dollars each on that island we think that not only are the taxes important to the county the overall county the employment is beneficial to all of our residents it doesn't make a difference if you live in East Point Appalachia we all know that our revenue comes from tourists and can come from those businesses that are serving those tourists so taking that into consideration the other thing that that we wanted to point out is that if you do remove the overlay and we allow the business district to be consumed by single family homes we will lose our ability forever to be able to have new businesses on the island so as we grow we will never be able to reclaim those properties we will never have another new business district to be able to attract businesses so we're asking for you to preserve that for us as a whole community to service the community time up. <coughs> thank you yes, sir. public comments public comments public comments next on the agenda will be the department director report superintendent of public work mr howard neighbor good morning commissioner good morning we uh talked about at the last meeting about the spoil side we've been cleaning on it so we probably got about half of it done uh, there was a lot more trees out here than what I was expecting, so hopefully another maybe week and a half or so we should have it finished. Uh, also been edging sidewalk, bypass throughout the county, and uh, fixing shoulders. We got a few bad roads, and as soon as it dries out a little bit, we'll be making a path back through the county grading, so it's got to dry out some first. Okay. So. All right. Anybody got anything to have? I'm just to try to do Nobody else. Good. If we can go to my report, um, item 26, page 8. The county, the county held a pre-construction meeting for the new road department administrative building on Thursday. During the meeting, there were additional requested changes to the bid specs that staff would, and staff would like the opportunity to address. So it is necessary to postpone the deadline for bid submissions to Monday, April 6 at 4 p.m. Uh, I'd like board action to postpone the deadline for bid submissions until that date, Monday, April 6th at 4 p.m. Pledge of the board. So moved. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Burke, second by Commissioner Jones. I also have a question, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay. So it's give us time to, to properly advertise and everything we need to do for that. Yeah, it's okay. just it's just a submission day for them to submit their bids. <laughs> okay. So okay. they'll probably end up having another, uh, it could be a, another pre-construction meeting, I okay. guess, is the way they would approach it. And we'll uh, add the addendums to the, um, on the website to uh, make sure that everybody's aware of the changes, the date and the other changes. So is this gonna be for bids or for pre-construction? Because you're asking for bids, that's why I was asking. Deadline for bid submissions. Bid submissions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The bids are already out there, and so, well, what we want to do is make sure we postpone that deadline so they have more time to make any changes to their bids once we once we make changes to the specs. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. That passed unanimous. Thank you, Commissioner. Anybody else got anything for Mr. Howe? Thank you, Keep up the good work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda be Mr. Funder Davis, Solid Waste Director. Good morning, Commissioner. <coughs> I have one item on my report that is going to uh, need action. 
And also, I do have another item to bring up that come in late. Okay. So I didn't get it on the report. Uh, my first item is air curtain incinerator uh, refurbished. At the February 4, 2020 board meeting, I left some information with you all showing what it would cost to refurbish the incinerator. I also included the price of a new incinerator. The quote for refurbish is from two different individuals. Uh, the first one is Wilkinson Industrial Service, 34,180. The second quote is Two Mile Welding Service, $29,334.32. I did not include on this here what the new one cost, but I left it in your package at the last meeting. It was over hundred some thousand dollars. Supports so uh, Ashton is approving to have our curtain incinerator refurbished. Okay, is that two miles well and that, that's local? Two miles is local, yes, sir. Okay. Pleasure to the board. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Fonda, um, when I went on a field trip with you and looked at that incinerator, it had a lot of rust. Uh, I mean, that's a normal wear and tear, but uh, I, I, there's no through and through rust that will impair the welding project, is there? Say that again, Commissioner. Well, does the, does the incinerator have so much rust in it that welding would be impaired in any way? That's correct. It is, it is okay then to be welded even though it's very rusty? Yes, they're going to ask to replace the panels. I see. That's yes. what I was seeing. Okay. Yeah. They'll cut out all that rust part, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, sir. Are we asking the board to approve this at this point? Because this is an amount that exceeds your local bid policy. Your local bid policy is probably going to require that this to be bid out. Or do we have an emergency situation that's going on? I, I, I apologize. I was, I was reading a, uh, an ordinance advertisement I had to get approved with a deadline with the paper this morning. So I didn't quite catch everything. But Yes, sir. I didn't realize on our repair that we needed to go out on bid. But if so, yes, we will need to go out, I guess. Well, I, uh, would the circumstances uh, justify declaring an emergency? I'm not sure what's going on with the incinerator. Yes, this, yes, the incinerator. It, it, and also the incinerator have to be inspected through DEP. Uh, we have to have an annual uh, vision, emission test. So uh, I would say it's critical. Uh, trying to keep up with the yard trash. You know, in the past that we have, when they come down, we only, uh, we only are permitted for such a, a, a certain amount of debris that we can hold on site. So with the tub grinder, and, and uh, it just can't keep up. So with the help of the incinerator, uh, we need it. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. sounds like there's a factual basis to declare there's an emergency and bypass your local bid policy. So whatever motion, if, if the board's going to approve this, you would just simply de declare an emergency based on the representations from Mr. Davis, waive the local bid policy and direct him to proceed. Pleasure to the board. I would move to proceed um, with the amendment. We have an emergency process here as well. And I'd also like to add that uh, uh, I know we are um, exceeding sometimes the actual landfill capacities potentially in certain areas and we have to look, you know, we have um, to look forward in the future to more land acquisition for our landfill. This will just delay that, I think. It's a healthy process to get this incinerator yes, yeah. taken care of. To well, we had an overflow due to the storm to come in there and yeah. that caused a lot of the problem. So mm -hmm. I see it being an emergency. It wouldn't have happened. I, normally it wouldn't have went that quick, right? Yeah. So yes, sir. got to do what we got to do. There's a lot of land clearing going on now, so it's they haven't said which one. Yet. Trying to keep up with like the smaller brush, oh, really? putting in it, it, it do more damage to the tub grinder than what the larger trees would. So the tub grinder is actually for the bigger trees versus the incinerators for more like smaller brush. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Bolt, could you clarify what your motion is? Because you, they ran on for a minute. The uh, motion is to approve um, the 
a proposal for, is it two mile welding service? Um, and that we are recognizing that um, we have an emergency situation from a landfill capacity status to get this approval accelerated. Second. Got a motion on approved by Commissioner Burke, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, that passes unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. The, the other item that I was mentioning to you that come up after my report was due, uh, we have a 2008 recycling truck. It's in the shop. And it's, uh, again, it's a 2008. That's the newest truck that we, newest recycling truck that we have. Uh, They're saying it's going to take $21,000 to get it on the road. It's up in Tallahassee. Our mechanics cannot uh, take care of that. I asked that, uh, that we may suspend recycling for a little bit to the market come back. Uh, as you all know, I've been preaching this here for a little while now. Ladies and gentlemen, for, for, for the, um, twenty-one thousand, almost buy a truck for that game. Yes, I want your new one. Not not that not that big of a truck. That's, that's another reason why I was saying we could go down to a smaller truck and use the mobile <laughs> unit. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let me ask you a question. No, no, that's, that's the newest truck. Did you get a, a bill for 25000 for a, one of the other recycling trucks? Or is that the same? Am I talking about the same? Yes, yeah, just the same truck. That's the, same that's the newest one. We, we are operating now for one that's, uh, I think, maybe like a 2000 okay. So it's it's bound to go down also. Okay. I thought you had two separate repair bills, one for 25 and one for 21 I thought I wanted to clear it. No, oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead. years old now and that truck is quickly heading towards actually having to have a rechassis done so that's going to be a major expense to fund a budget relatively in the near future as well um, and it's unfortunate because of course we're making you know, the final payment on it but that's that's the reality of it with Hurricane Michael and the, the amount of debris these trucks picked up did he is he getting any of his money back from, 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 from FEMA? Uh, I did talk to, uh, actually, Jenny with emergency management. Um, Fonda's amounts have not come in yet. We are anticipating maybe 100 to 150,000. We're not sure as far as the, the exact values of yet. But that could be something that we, you know, perhaps we could purchase talk another number boom truck with that. Well, we'll talk about that one. People here you go. Okay, well, well, and you you recommend that we suspend. Well, we need a motion to suspend them. So, um, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. as we consider the suspending of the recycling, you're you're saying that means countywide we're suspending recycling pickup at this time. And then I have a follow up. Is that correct? Yes. That's okay. Correct. And then, but at the same time, it is not the termination and end of it. It's just standby, time out. And you have published um, a amnesty schedule for the next two years, I think. Yes. And that's a that's a backup. And um, we're also going to look at potentially mobile recycling next year as we check our budget out this coming fall. That would be correct as well. Yes. Okay. So, I just think it's important for the public to know that this is not over. It's just stand by under the current circumstances with a plan to go forward. Well, if we don't suspend it, it's going to suspend itself. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the trucks ain't no good. True. I mean, that's what he's saying. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, I, I, I'm an active uh, supporter of recycling, and I understand the situation the county's in, so I just want to voice uh, my sure. agreement with this. If the market's not there, we're st stockpiling material. We have no place of selling and no place of storing. It's just becoming a problem for the county landfill operations. Uh, we don't know when the market's going to come back, but yeah, look at the suspension because the market is not there to sell the stuff right now. We're just, we're just yeah. drowning in it. And ultimately what's going to happen if we continue to have recycling out there, then we'll be putting 
recycling material in the landfill because we don't have any place to put it. So, mm -hmm. and then they were hauling it twice. So the simplest thing is just to, to remove the recycling bins for the time being. And, and I'm sorry that because I, I have a, a big supporter of recycling. I think it's important that we all show our commitment to try and, you know, maintain the, the earth we have and recycle things as best we can. But if the market doesn't uh, allow it in a small rural county, we just, we just have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just just so the public knows, we're not terminating everything. We're just we have a cascading situation of events right now. The market is depressed, and we have a truck that's impaired, and uh, we have a plan going forward for future recycling, potentially from a mobile standpoint. Well, we the county can't the county can't keep on taking the law. I mean, just got to do what we got to do. Pledge of the board. I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of Mr. Fonda Davis to suspend recycling until the market comes back. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones. I guess like it's going to die for a lack of suck. May I say something? But you have one. Uh, did did we end the sentence? We were just going to suspend recycling, or did, did I, I? Maybe I missed it uh, with a with an intention of opening it up again at some point. I think the motion died because we said suspend and period, and it gives the people an idea that we're not going to do any recycling peripherally anymore. We, I, I just want a gate open for people. That's all. If it, when we be able to buy a truck again? We well, sure. I, I don't think uh, to me dying end would have been terminating it, and yeah. no one. The motion wasn't to terminate; it was just to suspend it. Because, like you say, you want us to look at, at, at mobile that, and we need to look at trucks and equipment. So we do. Be a, 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 a big picture look at, at the situation. Can we say so Fonda is just asking to suspend it for right now. You're, we didn't ask to terminate it. So I understand. Can we I, say temporarily suspend it then? So that works. That's, there. That feel, yeah. I feel comfortable feel with that. I'll amend my motion to include the word temporarily. Okay. Okay, the motion. Okay, we, we, we're going to get a new motion. Okay. And it's we word word it. Temporary. Suspend the. Gonna be a temporary suspension. I got a motion on full by Commissioner Jones. Second. Second by Commissioner Burt. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's all I have. Anybody got anything else for? Mr. Davis? <coughs> I do, Commissioner. No one else uh, <laughs> does. If, uh, back to page 8 of uh, where my report is, item number 27. Mr. Fonda Davis, your Parks and Rec Director, has reached out to Ms. Tracy Yoder, the Superintendent of Schools, about a, the possible use of the light poles and scoreboard at the old Ap Apalachicola High School field. Ms. Yoder, ex Mrs. Yoder explained that the, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my place there, that AHS Fields property is now under the contract, under contract with Denton Cove. If the board is interested, a formal written request, which should include pictures, a plan stating how and when the lights will be removed, and that should be, and, and how the property will be restored, terrible there, Michael, as far as filling the holes and any other disturbance uh, from the county to Denton Cove is needed. If the board is interested in proceeding with this request, uh, it would require the efforts of Mr. Davis and Attorney Schuler conferring. I say Attorney Schuler because what they're asking for, sir, is actually a letter to Denton Coast attorney stating all these things. And so, yeah, now I, did, I will say as a sidebar before I move on, I did talk to Mike Cates. He thinks the polls are in excellent uh, condition and, and could serve us well. Uh, we will need a crane, correct, sir, yes. to move it. So what we'll do, we will have to hire a crane to move it and set it the same day so we pay once for it. Where, 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 where are these poles going? Uh, where, what need do we have? The poles are going to the DW? Soccer, yeah, the DW soccer field? The soccer field, yes. That's what we want to use them. And okay. the scoreboard goes? We can use the scoreboard at either one of the fields. We all 
Okay, I thought it was a place that needed a football school uh, yeah. football school board because yeah. it had, only had a baseball. Can't remember what park, but yeah. Oh, uh, how many poles we doing? How many poles we talking about? Five. There's five of them. Okay. These are the poles that is. is uh, I don't know if you notice the ones at Kendrick Field. It's not like the wooden poles. They they the concrete pole with the sleeves over. Mm -hmm. So they that's why I say they they are uh, in good shape. Okay. Be worth it. The edge of the boat. Is there a cost benefit for that? I mean, do we, we get this and not having to buy new poles. Yep, and getting them dislocated re and transported and relocated mm -hmm. again. Is, we're still money ahead. Yep. And we've got a no, new functional sign that's working as well for you. Scoreboard. Is that what this is all about? Yeah, scoreboard. Th that for our commission, I would have to. That, uh, have the electricity check to make sure the school board is in workable yeah. condition. That could be reused. Yeah. But that, that, to, to say, uh, one of the more prominent electricians here locally said if we yeah. can get the poles, it's really good for the county. Okay, they're good. Now you're going to set them poles the same time you move? That's, uh, we, yeah, we would <laughs> like to. Save oh, that, okay. that price and that crane for extra day, Mr. Chairman. All right. So moved. Second. I got a motion on the okay. floor by Commissioner. Master second by Commissioner Jones. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That pass unanimous. <coughs> Bring us a picture when you get it all set up. Mr. Chairman, I have something else while Mr. Fonda is here. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Davis, I've also had this same conversation with the superintendent now for probably at least a year. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion that we ask the school board to give the, or do whatever we have to do to get the school board to set the old Carabell field and move it out to Kendrick Park so we actually have a football school board at the football field instead of a baseball school board. Okay. So uh, my motion is to ask uh, them about the one in Carabell. It's okay. The one in Carabell as well, it's school property. Okay. About getting it located. You know, <laughs> yep, and we can move it out there to Kendrick Park where we started the new youth football uh, complex that has a baseball school board. Okay, I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones, talking about Commissioner. Massey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That pass unanimous. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, other than I just like like you know that they started on the basketball court on St. George Island. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let me ask you a question. Before uh, I know the city and the, the Denny Cole is in a Miller, they 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 taking care of their business, but is there anything else you see that we might can use before? Oh, they take ownership. I, I think that's about it on that property. That's about it? Yes, sir. What about the caribou, bro? Uh, that's about it, yeah. No bleachers or anything. It's good there, so just a school board okay. and the caribou and light poles and that flat. So we good to go without asking them playing? All right. I just one more point for Fonda. Fonda, as we move into the spring sports season and everything, um, could you uh, ask the EMTs, as policy and schedule permits, to stage one of their ambulances at some of these public events so that it's ready, available, and it would be important in case something happens? Yes, sir. Like we did last year. Thank you. We will do. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I, may, I just want to clarify that they can do that. But there's no possible way they can be at all three parks at one time. Correct. Right. Yes. Because there will be days that they'll have having games in Appalachia East One and Carabell. Yep. Sure. So okay. the most we have on the road at one time is three. That's <coughs> correct. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Got any, anybody else got anything for Mr. David? Keep up the good work, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda will be Emergency Management Director, Ms. Pam Bonilla. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Mm -hmm. um, I do not have any action items at this time. <coughs> no action items. Any, anybody got anything for Ms. Bonilla? Okay. Oh, well, you lucky. Keep up the good work. <coughs> Next on the agenda will be the extension office director, Mr. Eric Lewis-Drain. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. 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 Good mor
morning, Commissioners. Morning. I also do not have anything extra for you today in addition to my written report. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about anything on that. We're going to send you back early, too. Thank you, <laughs> you Mr. Eric. Yeah, have a good day. How are things going, Eric, moving into your new facility? How's that looking? I'm still working on getting our internet hooked up over there and the phone system set up, but we have all of our <coughs> stuff in the building. <laughs> And I'm working out of there just using a um, local MiFi unit, so I have access for my internet yeah. there. But our office manager is still at the courthouse and uh, working off of a table with her computer where she has access to internet and phones to take care of that business for us. So I'm hoping the MediaCom will get set up there fairly soon. I have a contract signed with them, and we're just waiting for that hookup to get done. Okay. As soon as we get that, we can um, install our phone setup because it will be a voice over internet phone system through the university's um, Zoom package that they good. support us with. So. Keep up the good work, Mr. Love. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Next on the agenda will be TDC Administrator, Mr. John Solomon. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, John Good Solomon, morning. TDC Director. Um, real quick, we, I have no action items. Do you have the information report I did provide? If you want, want me to go over that, I can. No, we good. Right. Um, Anybody? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Go ahead. John, if you would, uh, let the Commission know about the, again, about the meeting coming in April. Okay. Because some of them might want to try to attend. Yes, and I would like that too. Um, part of it was the um, TDC board voted to cancel the April meeting that we have because it falls on the same dates of the Visit Florida Adventure Tourism Conference that we're having here in Apalachicola. <coughs> and that is so that board and any of the vendors can attend. I'd like to invite any of you that might be interested in attending as well. Um, we already had somebody go to one of the conferences like this to get a taste of what it was and it's really educational on what the new age of tourism not for the younger people for, for the middle age um, that they're into now and what the advertising has worked and what they're looking for which we have in Franklin County is part of the reason why they chose us as one of the uh, tourism location for the conference um, which is a it's a big deal it's the first one so <laughs> And John, when and where will it be again? It's going to be April 7th and 8th at the Fort Coombs Armory. Lunch will be provided on both days um, at the conference. I believe the conference fee is 25 or $30 for an attendee. So. Okay. okay. Anybody got anything else for Mr. Solomon? Good. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you, John. sir. Y'all have a great day. We're going to change around a little bit. Mr. Chairman, if you would, um, mm -hmm. before we get into uh, the planning and zoning <coughs> and the Board of Adjustment and Public Hearing re uh, reports, I would ask that you move Mr. Alan Pierce as Restored Coordinator report because he is not feeling too well today, so I'd like him really? to do his report as some of you, I could, it's kind of obvious some of you board members aren't feeling too well today, so maybe you all caught the same flu. So if we can start on page 7, item 21. And when he's finished with his report, he's going to read item 28 on my report that talks about the um, multi-use pad survey that's needed on, on Alligator Point. Okay. Oh, uh, next on the agenda be Mr. Alan Peel. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Mr. Peel. Yeah, I managed to acquire the uh, sinus problems going around town. Uh, all right, item number one, well, actually item 21 on your report. Board actually signed agreement with FDOT for $600,000 to rehabilitate airfield pavements. This project will involve sealing as many cracks in the joints on the runways and taxiways as possible. The grant will pay 100% of the cost. Sealing the joints between the concrete slabs is important because it keeps weeds from growing up and helps keep the concrete from chipping, which is a major issue when props and jets blow bits, of, or if they blow bits of concrete and other materials into engines. So moved. Second. Got a motion on the program. Commissioner Perry, second by <laughs> Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Thank you. Number two, board act for Mr. Marone to prepare a letter for the chairman's signature requesting FDOT study County Road 370 or Alligator Drive to reevaluate the road's functional classification. The open, ultimate aim of the study would be to provide FDOT with the justification that Alligator Drive should become part of the Federal Highway Administration, aid to highway program. 
Such a step would mean the road would still be a county road, but the road would be eligible for federal funds under the terms of FHWA. If the FDOT study is accepted by FHWA, it would be a big step in getting additional funding for Alligator Drive, but it would not mean automatic funding. FHWA would still need to have funds available. FDOT has said that the study will take between six months and a year, and the start date will depend when FDOT gets the study funded. But the path, uh, again, I need to stress that, that FDOT is doing this not to help this road become a state road. That is never going to happen. That is, they, they're absolutely abundantly clear that they are helping us trying to get on the state, on the federal highway. Now, I don't know if that's a little deal between the state and the feds saying, okay, we'll do a shell game and confuse Franklin County or not. But anyway, no. we'll, we'll try this yeah. for a bit. All right. Uh, Mr. Field, um, for the public, could you tell us what the munitions? I'm sorry. FW. Oh, the Federal Highway, Admin federal highway uh, should be Federal Highway Administration. I, 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 I apologize. Maybe I have an extra W in there for somehow. I don't know what happened. Okay. I don't know where the W came from. I put I, it in there, but I don't know why. I say move. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. You made a move? Yes, sir. Sure. Got, got a motion approved by Commissioner Burke, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, that pass unanimous. Thank you, Alan, for that. That just adds another layer to help facilitate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, and this came out of the meeting that we, uh, Commissioner yep. Bolton and I attended at the Representative Schoff's office back in December. So I appreciate that FDOT did follow through mm -hmm. and said they'll give us some guidance on how to, to help get on the federal list. So we'll see. The, the, the thing, I don't want to mislead anybody. The, all right, so first, we, we'll write the letter to FDOT. The FDOT has to find the funding. I don't have no idea if it's a $10,000 study or $100,000. I don't have any idea. They didn't say. But they'll have to find the funding, and then it takes six months to a year. So this is not a short-term process. It's okay. But it's right. better than nothing. Yep. Okay, the next couple items on our report really are really just for informational purposes, Mr. Chairman, but I went to the APTA meeting on Alligator Point last Saturday, and I need to sort of get in the record at least one thing that I said that was not completely correct down there. Um, at the last meeting, I reported the County Emergency Manager Office received a form from FEMA for the county to sign agreeing to the hazard mitigation proposal for Alligator Drive, and the proposal had an error in it regarding the sheet pile. The FEMA form listed the materials to be used as only vinyl for the vertical seawalls when the plans developed by the county show steel sheet pile on the south side of the road. As I informed the board at the last meeting, I did not sign the form and sent FEMA staff an email explaining the reason. On Monday, February 10th, I met with FEMA staff at the county EOC and they acknowledged that FEMA had made an error. On Friday, February 14th, I reviewed the revised form and did authorize the county EM office to sign the form, which now includes steel sheet pile on the south side of Alligator Drive. The revised form increased the cost estimate of mitigation to $2.5 million, which is some $800,000 over the first uh, request. So they, they, they made the change in the material and they made the change in the, in the cost. So I appreciate FEMA stepping forward and said, yeah, we, we, we screwed up on that. Uh, number B is really for, this is the one that I, uh, I, 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 here's the complete story. I also received notification from the state of Florida that they were obligating PW228 for some $2.6 million worth of repairs at Alligator Drive. My problem was PW228 is the PW Hurricane Hermine that I thought we were de-obligated. The issue was clarified on Monday, February 10th, when the state informed me that they used the term obligating for any action that changes funds. In this case, the state was obligating a version of PW228 that actually de-obligates the funds. The summary of the situation is the county and the state are on the same page, enrolling the 2.6 million of Hurricane Hermine into a future Hurricane Michael PW. I'm telling the board this because I made an incomplete report to the app at the Saturday meeting and hopefully this will get back. So they use the word obligate when they're taking money away and adding money to, uh, you know, don't have to be, seems to me there ought to be two different words, but they use the same word. Okay. All right, um, number 24, inform the board that Commissioner Jones and I attended the Department of Economic Opportunity Workshop at the Appalachia Community Center on February 13th regarding the state's plan for spending $735 million of CDBG disaster recovery funds that will come to Florida because of Hurricane Michael. The state is in the early stages of drafting the plan. The plan will have to be approved by the federal HUD agency before the funds will be sent to the state. The state will be the administrator of the funds, but Franklin County will be eligible to compete for some of the funds. Based upon the meeting, I would estimate the window for applying for funds will not actually open until the fall of 2020. So we have at least six months to go before uh, we see an opportunity to apply for these funds. Just like with any other CDBG program, I believe it's going to be in the county's best interest to hire a CDBG grant writer administrator. While Ms. Debbie Belcher has been utilized by the county on many occasions, because this is a special CDBG program, if the county wants to utilize a grant writer administrator, it will need to advertise and select one specifically for CDBG DR, which is disaster recovery programs. 
So I just mentioned to you now, I don't think we're ready to advertise. We, I, need, I need a little more guidance from the state of Florida on exactly what their interest is. But I, I just want to put that note out to you all that I think we should be advertising for CDBG grant writer because this CDBG is a, is a, is a program. It's, they're not waiving all the other programs. So whoever, whatever grant request we make under this disaster recovery is going to have to comply with a bunch of re federal regulations. And so you really need someone qualified to do that. And maybe it's Ms. Belcher, maybe it's not, uh, you know, but we need to, I think it's going to be under the county's best interest to hire a competent CDBG grant writer for this program. And I just say to you now, I think we need to get a little more information from the state before we actually advertise, but that's, that's where I'm headed. Uh, you want to wait? Well, I would say wait. Let's don't advertise quite yet. I'll come back to you all maybe next month when we get a little more guidance from the state of Florida. Because the issue is, are, are they going to be awarding points for certain things? I, mean, I don't really know what I'm advertising for yet. Um, at this time, DEO did not think the state would be reserving any minimum amount for each county. So Franklin County would be competing against projects in other hurricane-impacted counties, such as Bay and Gulf. Further, what the county applies for must have some connection to damage associated with Hurricane Michael and must, and must serve some portion of low and moderate income households. And I'll stop right there before I make the last statement. So one of the, one of the, big, the big battle is going to be housing. Uh, Bay and Gulf County need millions and millions of dollars of housing. And I, the, the, at the meeting, they did not say they would, they were, one, they said they were not going to allocate X number of dollars per county, so we weren't going to be guaranteed any money. <clears throat> and then two, it's going to have to serve low and moderate income households. I don't know that we have that many lower and moderate income households damaged by Hurricane Michael in Franklin County. I mean, we had some perhaps, but, but so we just have to see what the rules are going to be before we uh, go seek them. But the critical thing is, Commissioner, it has to be the, the, the grant that we, the money we receive has to be associated with Hurricane Michael damage. It can't be for some unrelated program. Uh, mm -hmm. And as an example, the last statement, Commissioner Jones asked about building a new EOC, and they said that was not eligible as an example. Other programs that people want, new buildings, not going to be eligible. You know, you got to, it has to be associated with Hurricane Michael. But didn't the governor put out the money too? This is that? I believe this is that money. This is it? I mean, he announced it, the governor announced this money being received from the federal government. And so now with the state of Florida, they had a, they had a meeting here, and, I, and Commissioner Jones, and you all may have seen the other, they're, they're going to have some more meetings now in different counties. And so there's, they're, they're, they're trying to get public input about how to utilize the best money. And it's, um, It'll be all the counties impacted, including inland counties. And so I don't know. There could be a lot of money reserved for ag. I, mean, I just don't know what the money's going to be reserved for. But so until we have a better idea, I would say let's wait to, to advertise for a grant writer. Well, they don't need to get in there. If, if these programs, if they don't just award these little counties some money, they just not, they're not going to get nothing. I know. I, I was hoping they would, they would reserve, you know, X million dollars per county, but they're, they're, they didn't appear yeah. to be. I mean, was the way they, that was my idea. No, they didn't. Mm -mm. The way they do it, they just, the bigger county get all the money and look, they kind of go with that. It's wrong, but that would have. So, and we'll know a little more here in the next couple of weeks when they get a, 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 a draft plan out. Okay. Uh, last item of my report is inform the board that I received an email from FDEM that said the county should expect the $226,000 of FDEM funds for Williams Hospital should be received by the county by the end of this month. So hopefully I'll come in very shortly. And then Commissioner and, uh, number 28. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the Alligator Point Multi-Use Path Survey. Before can construction can begin on the Alligator Point Multi-Use Path, the county needs to apply for a permit to build seaward of the coast control line. The application, requirement, uh, the application requirements include a survey of the Gulf Shore line along length of pathways, which costs up to $12,000. The survey cannot be paid for the grant funds, therefore it must be paid out of professional services. There is money in professional services for this budget year, so I, I request that you do this. This is a situation we have already designed. DOT is paying for all the design and all the construction costs, okay. but there's a permit deal that's not part of the, that's not, not, not part of their fees. So we've already designed the bike path. This, this first phase is going to go from the marina to uh, the old KOA. And it'll be uh, the first part of the bike path from the marina to the S-curve, for those of you familiar with Alligator Point, will be uh, a paved shoulder on either side of the road. From the S-curve to the marina will be a separate bike path on the north side of the road. Uh, but all, a lot of this is south of the Coast Control Line. DEP requires us a permit. So we need to spend $12,000 of our money to benefit some several hundred thousand dollars of FDOT construction money that is already allocated for this project. 
So if you have to want to look, look at it as an investment in order to get a construction project done, that's just the way. And we have the money. So. And we have the money. For okay, services. good. Well, I make that into a motion. Second. I got a motion on approved by Commissioner Burke, second by Commissioner Massey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimously. Let me just say, Mr. Chairman, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the total picture of this Alligator Point project, it, this is part of the capital, to, in a way, you consider this, this bike path as part of the capital to see bike path that someone talked about the last meeting we were here. So ultimately, and if you all who are driving through Wakoa County, you see they already have it coming from Tallahassee down the old St. The St. Mark's Trail has been built for a number of years. Now you branch off the St. Mark's Trail coming all the way not along 98 to the Wakoa High School. They are now building uh, more in Wakoa. Uh, over to the Wakoa Franklin line. Ultimately, it will go all the way into Franklin County, down um, 319 mm -hmm. into Carabelle. That's the ultimate destination. This will be a spur off of that to Alligator Point. Ultimately, Alligator Point will have a bike path all the way up to, to uh, 319. So this is all being paid for out of uh, state dollars or federal dollars. Mr. Chairman, clarification. Ultimately, I actually go for, through Pensacola all the way to Alabama. I could, okay. Really? Yes, sir. Sun Coast Trail. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm done, Commissioner. All right. Anybody got anything <coughs> else for Mr. Pierce? Keep up the good work. Hope you get better. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. I take pride. <laughs>